Hello everyone. In continuation to previous video, let's start our laws of access opening. In the previous video, we discussed about the law of centrality, law of concentricity, and law of CEG. In today's video, we'll be discussing the law of symmetry, law of orifice location, and law of color change. So let's start. If we look at the laws of symmetry, there are two laws. The first law of symmetry says that except for maxillary molars, the canal orifices they are equidistant from a line drawn in the mesiodistal direction through the pulp chamber floor. Now, what do you mean by this law? So this is the mandibular molar, and we draw a line in the mesiodistal direction through the pulp chamber floor. So, if the one canal orifice it is located at this distance from this line, then the another orifice will be located equidistant from the same line. So, this is the meaning of line. Canal orifices they are equidistant from the line drawn in the mesiodistal direction through the pulp chamber floor. You can also see in this image. that this is the line drawn in the mesiodistal direction and if one orifice is located at this distance from this line similarly the another orifice will be located equidistant from this line so basically the canal orifices are located equidistant from the line drawn in the mesiodistal direction but in case of maxillary molars this is not applicable due to presence of oblique ridge so these are excluded from the laws of symmetry now coming to the second law of symmetry it states that except for maxillary molars the canal orifices they lie on the line perpendicular to the line drawn in the mesiodistal direction across the center of floor of pulp chamber now what do you mean by this law so these are the mandibular molars and this is the line drawn in the mesiodistal direction across the center of the floor of the pulp chamber and you can see this is one canal orifice this is the another canal orifice so basically the canal orifices they lie on the line perpendicular to this line which, which is drawn in the mesiodistal direction across the center of the floor of the pulp chamber similarly in this case this is the line drawn in the mesiodistal direction and here the canal orifices they lie on the line drawn perpendicular to this line so this is the second law of symmetry and this we have already seen that in both laws of symmetry the maxillary molars are excluded now coming to the laws of orifice location see the first law of orifice location says that the orifices of the root canal they are located at the junction of walls and the floor now let's try to understand these laws of orifice location by looking at this open box so from this open box you can see that this is the junction of the walls and the floor of the box so these are the tentative locations of the canal orifices So from this law we can conclude that first law of orifice location helps us to identify the location of canal orifices clear similarly in this image you can see that if this is the pulp chamber these are the junctions of walls and the floor so these are the tentative locations of the canal orifices coming to the second law of orifice location what does it say it says that orifices of root canals they are always located at the angle in the floor to the wall junction at the angle in the floor to the wall junction what do you mean by this from this we can say that the orifices they are located in the point angles so this is the one plane this is the another plane this is third plane and this junction of floor and the wall is point angle so basically the orifices are located in the point angles in the floor and the wall junction clear now if we look at the third law of orifice location it says that 
orifices of the root canals they are always located at the terminus of roots developmental fusion lines basically this law is giving more precise location of orifices as we know the roots they have developmental fusion lines the orifices they are located at the ending point or the terminus of roots developmental fusion lines so if we summarize these three laws of orifice location basically the first law tells that orifices of root canal they are located at the junction of walls and the floor and the second law it tells it more precisely that the orifices are located at the angle in the floor and the wall junction and the third law is explaining this location in the more precise manner that this location is at the terminus of roots developmental fusion lines don't get confused with these three laws suppose i am telling that i am staying in india that is one location if i am making it more precise that i am staying in chandigarh which is present in india that is the another precise location and if i am saying that i am staying in sector 23 of chandigarh in india that is even more precise Similarly in the laws of orifice location the first law tells that orifices are located at the junction of floor and the wall and second law tells that it they are located at the angle in the floor to wall junction that means at the point angle and the third law tells that they are located at the terminus of roots developmental fusion lines basically they are telling the more precise location of canal orifices I hope this law of orifice location is also clear to you. Now coming to the law of color change. What does this law say? It says that the pulp chamber floor it is always darker in color than the walls. As you can clearly see in these images if this is the floor of the pulp chamber it is quite darker in color than the walls of the pulp chamber. so we have reached the floor of pulp chamber initially we located the orifices and then by color change of the pulp chamber we can clearly demarcate that yes we have reached at the floor of the pulp chamber so what is the clinical significance of law of color change one that we have reached the floor of the pulp chamber second it gives the guidance to determine that excess cavity preparation is complete because we have reached the floor of the pulp chamber we need not to drill more so the law of color change says that the floor of the pulp chamber as you can see in this image it is darker than the walls of the pulp chamber so this is the final termination point of the excess cavity preparation So I hope these laws of excess cavity preparation are clear to you. If you feel any doubt, kindly message me in the comment box. Subscribe my channel for more such videos. Take care and goodbye.